repeat one more time to make sure. All right, I have an example. Like we we learned the basic of the classes that we want to use. So this example is going to show you. I will try to write an object. So I have class date, created date. I have receipt. A receipt, pretty much a class that I created, right? Which attributes? Ticket number, the name, server name, date, like the date that you created a ticket. This is a receipt that when you go shopping store. Quantity of, and then the price. Okay. Now, file name. Of course, when you write to the file, you need two things. You need what you want to write to, which is the binding file, an object that stores this information. This is the binding file. I O, right? One O, one O. I mean, right? And the file name that I want to write to. The file name can be simple, output dot dat. But I just try to keep tracking on my record based on the time and ticket number. So pretty much the receipt itself can be my file name. Ticket number one. So output's gonna look like that with underscore, right? And then I just get the receipt date that I just store in there. Convert to to string. The date happened to return colon between the time like twelve o'clock, right? So I replace it with underscore, right? For Okay. It's actually July 30th, 2012, right? And then they have colon 619, that could be the time, right? Eastern Standard Time. It's actually 2013 is the year. So this is pretty much the 12 o'clock and 6 minutes and 19 seconds, right? So that's the clock with the colon replacing with the underscore. <coughs> and then I put the underscore at the end after the date right here and then it's going to have the server name right which is tennis and dot that so that's that's just the file name like I said it can be just output dot that now I pass this two things in I want to write the binary file which is the object and file name to write to and we need to try and catch in case of file not file exception, we learn that in try catch. I also create my own object writer. Okay. This is just showing you two things here. I want to show you how to use try catch when you throw. Okay, like this guy write object file. I want to create my own try catch. And when I use this, that's why I have to surrounding with try catch. When you those, because write object file did not handle it. All right, so let me show you the receipts. So this is receipt class. Something that's very important is it must implement serializable. All the object, all the class, right? When you instantiate, you get object. You want to write that to the file as the binary file. You require to implement serializable. Otherwise, you cannot write as a binary file or read as binary file. So you have to have implement serializable, okay, as an interface. And this interface doesn't have to implement any methods. It's just telling that hey, I want to make the binary input and output, read in and output with the binary files. And this is pretty much the attributes that I just shown you earlier, right? Set and getters to string, nothing much. <clears throat> Alright, so that's the read write object file here. I have it's pretty much just like several files output here after I run the program. Now let's look at my object writer, right? We want to look at object writer. This part is just to read in, okay? So again, my object writer here, I create write object file and read object file. Okay. 
So to read in, I just pass the file name that I try to read. Now of course, you read in as object. That's why you have to cast it back as receipt. Because when you write, you can write many objects. It can be writing the date itself, receipt itself, or any other classes. Right? So that's why I have to cast it back to the right one. I get to read in. Same, you have to handle file not file exception. Also, we have to handle class not file because the object here. Right? You cast it back to the class type. <clears throat> okay, and then I just try to print out what I read back. This is just to prove that I can write the object and read it back in. Okay. So now let's look at object writer, the class that I write. Okay. Alright, so this is object writer. So this is a key that we just learned on the slides. First, I want to cover the basic, right? Object writer. Now, I make it as T type. This is called parameterized. We talk about the generic parameterized when we talk about polymorphisms. Same. I try to make this to be able to write any classes. That's why I just say parameterized T. If I say receipt it only do receipt but I want to make sure it can write any objects okay so now this is a constructor right so this is another type of constructor you can pass in the object that you want to write so that's why I said T object like you can pass receipt in it's gonna be receipt right and the file name that I want to write to <clears throat> so set to those attributes and the date object and file name <clears throat> now write object file right this is the part that I create my own like I said the concept that we learned from slide is here object output stream and object input stream Right. So from the slide, the hierarchies that we look at, if you look at your handouts, I'm actually using this one. I didn't use that one yet. So just this one. Object input stream and object output stream. So like I said, object input stream and object output stream, they don't know what is string. They only know I.O. Because the guys who know is their input stream and their output stream, right? that has the read the type okay but object input stream object output stream they only know just 1010 so file output stream file input stream and file output stream that's part of the hierarchy too if you review back Right, so we dealing with object input stream, file input stream, object output stream, file output stream, right? So I want to output pretty much just say this dot file name. Of course if you look at the file output stream, object output stream, Java doc, you see they require you to do those statements. I try to cover the concept of try catch here at the same time. So object output stream. So when I create it, I say new object output stream, right? Let's look at our code again. Ob object output stream need an output stream. Look at output stream again on your chart. Output stream is what? This is called polymorphism, right? Because this is the parent inheritance here. Because I'm going to put file output stream. If you look back at my code, this is the file output stream, right? 
type which is here file output stream here passing into the output stream right there polymorphism spray and object output stream here you need to throw input outputs exception you need to pull though these are the throw statement security new pointer you see the method make it throws that mean they not do try catch inside they not handle it so that's why when I do I just throw file not file exception and IO exception input output exception again just like that IO exception right so when I write a code I just say hey I'm not going to handle at this point try catch I try to show you how to create right the methods and there's no reason for you to do try catch in here because this is not your main I let it one who use it to handle it because you don't know when to handle it and how you want to handle it. The guy who use it is this guy. Go back to object writer test. When you use right here, right? Write object file. Remember my write object file I have though, right? So that's why you have to do try catch. I throw two things file not file exception and IO exception that's why you have to do two things here <coughs> to handle so that's the difference between try catch and those we like to try catch when you really do the real work here to use them right you want to handle how you want to handle say file not file something like that to the users right but when you create the methods like in this case you don't need to handle it the guys who gonna use my right object gonna handle it, so that's why I throw it. So that's a concept of those in try catch. All right, so now the rest is simple. You just pass the file output stream right in and this dot file name. Okay, so file output stream. The reason I have to do that because you guys see it's asked you to do file not file exception so let's check the java doc for file not output stream and this is a constructor that one file not file exception that's why I have to throw two things when I do it dealing with this right so the first though is IO exception for the object output stream that we seen object output stream IO exception object output stream right right there object output stream IO exception now the second though is for file not file exceptions is from the file output stream correct we use several classes here and then we're done we just take the right object, right output that right object. That's the methods of the object output stream and this dot object that you want to write to, and print say save the file already done. Same as the read object file, right? Like I said, read object file has to deal with file not file exception input output exception input output exception you can guess it's from object input stream right and file not file exception is from file input stream and class not file exception in case that you try to read and you don't find a class like in this case my class is the receipt right that I created right receipt here like in case that you not found it it's going to throw it too because it has to be a part of the project okay so that's why when you read the receipt you just read it and do to catch off three of those right file not file exception class not file exception and input output exception because I make the those here I didn't handle it I throw it for the one who used to handle and after that just get input dot read object and it's taking care to cast into t-type return object back so that's how it works 